As you guys know, we love a van, especially a day van. So check this thing out. As cool as this thing is, unfortunately it's no ours. It's actually one of our subscribers and he's got a noise coming from the back. He sees it sounds a bit like maybe wheel bearing, maybe brakes. So we're just getting a quick road test just now to see if we can hear anything. So far, it's quite hard to hear because of all the bits and bobs in the back. I think we need to get it on a smooth road and get it up to speed and see if we can hear it but I had a quick visual look around the brakes and they're not the best looking so we'll probably have all the wheels off it and measure everything up and make sure everything's alright. I can hear a slight noise but a slight rumble. It's hard to pinpoint where it's coming from. Though. Can you hear it Gerald? Not really. You've got younger ears than me. I can't even really hear it like a hubbing droning noise coming from the back. It's really hard to tell with these as well because of the huge wheels. They've got massive wide wheels on them. And they obviously come with a bit of road noise as well. The fact that the brakes are they looking the best. That could be making a wee bit of noise. So if we can't pinpoint it on the road test, we'll get it back, we'll get it jacked up. We'll check all the wheel bearings manually. Right guys, so after a little road test, I can hear a slight noise for the back. It doesn't sound like anything major. What I did feel though was the clutch slipping, so I'm going to have to have a chat with the customer later or the subscriber and take him out for a wee drive and show him what I mean. There is a slight noise for the back here. I think it might just be... I'm hoping it's just brake pads catching on the disc lip, but it might be a wheel bearing, I don't know. So first things first, I'm going to get it jacked up on the back, have a look at these wheel bearings, check them for play and make sure they're okay. As always guys, make sure you've got it wheel chalked. I've got it in gear, I've got chalk at the front wheel, I've got a jack underneath and I've got an axle stand underneath as well. But what you want to do is make sure you check side to side and top and bottom again. And if you feel any movement on it, it's probably wheel bearing. But if you feel loads of movement, just get somebody to poke their head under and have a look. And then obviously get a bit of a spin. This one does sound like there's a wee sort of gritty hump coming there, but there's also a lot of brake noise as well. And the discs have got quite a hefty lip on them. So I'm going to take the wheel off and check the back of the disc and check the pads, make sure they're okay. I think this might be benefit for some discs and pads as well. So let's get the wheel off and have a look. Right, so I decided before i have done anything to jack this side up and give this a check as well and this is making similar noises so I'm going to take the caliper off it so I can take away the pads and that will stop any friction rubbing and then I can get a spin and see if we can hear any wheel bearing noises it'll also give me a chance to look at the back of the discs properly and see how much of a lip's actually on them because they do feel pretty bad but you can't rely on your fingers, you need to actually have a look, so best to just get it off and that way, if they are okay, I can get them a good clean and put it all back together and see if it makes any difference. Right, so what I've seen for stripping this down is we've got a torn boot on the brake caliper, which might lead to this being a little bit tight. So at the moment, it doesn't seem to be seized, but it might be slower to release than what it should be and when you look at the brake pads you can see them starting to crumble on the edges it normally starts to do that when they've got a little bit hot um, obviously the discs are you can't really see it on camera but you can feel it they're very very scored and they've got a huge lip on the back which could all be leading to noise but I'm going to advise the brakes be done on it 
I probably advise a caliper. It's up to the customer. I'll price everything up and I'll let them know. But this is where I could hear the wheel bear noise. So I'll pass you to Charlie. Can you hear it? I can hear it, yeah. Ah, you hear it that time. Every now and again, there's just a really, really gritty noise coming from this wheel bearing. So I think definitely a wheel bearing on this side and discs and pads. And I'll advise that caliper. But I'll put this back together for now. And I'm going to do the same on the other side, just to make sure the wheel bearing on that side is okay. So uh, let's put this back together. <laughs> Sorry about this, it, didn't it? Getting old. <laughs> Music licensing reimagined. We've actually found that this side's worse once we stripped it down. So if you come in closer with the camera, Charlie, I'll try and get it to do it. sounding as well yeah so two rear wheel bearings discs and pads this uh, this caliper boot looks okay but we have noticed that there's not as much heat damage on these pads so it's obviously not sticking quite as bad but one is wearing out quicker than the other it's no excessive but I don't know these cost the back calipers on these are near a massive amount of money so if you're in here doing it is it worth putting a pair on stick it down in the comments guys if you were doing this would you put a pair on and just have it done i probably would you have seen me do it on the audi i put a pair on my audi and um, because they're no massively expensive but i'll price it up i'll tell the customer and then he can let us know what he wants to do we're back at the unit. Oh, you can't even fool me looking like this, man. Uh, Charlie's just going to get the Peugeot wash ready for its MOT. We've just put the side light bulbs in it. We've fog replaced the fog it. light bulbs. Charlie, how much were the fog light bulbs? They're like 40 quid each. It was weird. No, nah, they wouldn't be quite that much. £24 a bulb. 48 quid. Oh, expensive, eh? For two fog light bulbs. Jeez. There must be another option for it, but. Hey, that's it. So, so Peugeot is fancy. You pay fancy <laughs> prices. <laughs> so yeah, Charlie's going to get a clean up ready for its MOT. Um, and then once the MOT is done, we're going to bring it back and, well, you'll see it in the video on the other channel. You'll need to stay tuned for that. But the last job of the day is this Volkswagen Touran. So this Touran's come in with a knocking noise for the near side front. It's also got a slight ticking noise when we're turning corners. But since the ticking noise started, the traction control light's staying on. There's a brake pad warning light on. So obviously, the first thing I'm going to do is plug the good old top down into it. So we'll get the AD800, plug that in and see what fault codes we've got. Now, I've spoke to Katrina for Top Don, and there is a special offer on at the minute. So if any of you guys want to get yourself an 8800, I think they're only about 250 quid for a limited time. So I'll leave a link in the description. Go check one out. They're a great tool, well worth it. Let's plug it in here and see what fault codes we get. Right guys, there seems to be quite a load of faults in here. So first things first, I'm just going to clear the DTCs and see what comes back. Because looking at them, none of them are going to cause what's causing the clicking noise on the wheel. So I'll check that out first. Um, and what I'm going to do, there was a fault code for a brake pressure sensor there. So I'm going to go round. Oh, it's finished already. Right. Everything's cleared except that same one. Brake pressure sensor one. Right. Let's have a look at all the visual stuff. 
check fluid levels, check all the plugs are on properly, and take it from there. Right guys, after a bit of research, this brake pressure sensor fault is actually quite a common fault in Volkswagens. So basically the pressure sensor is inside the ABS pump. Um, Volkswagen were doing them under warranty for a long while, and I think now they offer a goodwill gesture of like 50% off, but um, I've had a chat with a customer and he wants me to try and find a second hand one. That's fair enough, but for now we're going to pop the drop link on and he's going to come and collect the car, so... How are you getting on with yours? Got the fuse room. Yeah. It's all clean. All clean, ready yeah. to go. The exterior anyway. Yeah, we can do the interior after the MOT. That looks a bit better. Looks a lot better. Yeah. Artless I.O. It's nearly home time, I'm hungry. Thought that was rough there, but it's mouldy. Right, before we go though, we did film a bit of an unboxing video the other day for the Behind the Scenes channel. And for some reason, all the footage disappeared. So, we unboxed a new trolley jack. So we got ourselves a nice new three-ton trolley jack. We got some low-level run-up lamp lamps. I done it again. Low-level run-up ramps, and then we got this. Oh, we were supposed to get this, but yeah. we bought something a bit different. They, they actually sent us a welder. There's like a three different types of welder yeah. in one welder. Instead of this, but this, this should help us at loads. Check this out. Let's get it open. Good snips. They never sponsored so, this. <laughs> it's not a sponsored video though. I had to buy this. So, it's a crossbeam adapter for your trolley jack. So, pull the three ton jacket. And we'll show you how this works. Well, basically, you take this bit off, and then the cross beam goes on in place of that. Oh. Sits there. Yeah, but you take this off first. Yeah. Right, so that was mega tight. We got that removed. Then what you do is that's supposed to fit in the hole, but it's too big. That's too big to fit. So we might need to cut that bit off and put a slightly smaller one on. Yeah. We might have to modify it a bit. So yeah, that's a bit of a, a let down. We're going to have to modify the new tool to fit the new tool, but it should help in the end. Basically, the beam goes into the jack, secures to the jack and then these go in either side like that and these thread in here so you get adjustable height so basically it's like a beam jack it'll allow you to lift both sides at the same time so theoretically it's a good tool I just didn't think we'd be modifying it before we used it Sorry. It shouldn't take too long. Nah, Charlie's taking the stickers off it because it's no sponsored video. So he doesn't want to advertise them. Terrible <laughs> yeah, that's going to be it for today, guys. We're just waiting for the customer to come and pick up this tour and now. We've got the Peugeot ready here for its MOT. So, next up, you'll see us on Saturday. Well, you'll see us on Sunday, but what are we doing this Sunday? Engine swap in the micro? <laughs> I don't even know what we're doing. I don't know what we're doing yet, guys, but something will come up. So make sure you tune in. It'll be something interesting. Thanks again for everybody who's liked, commented and subscribed. Uh, we'll try to get to 10,000 subscribers before the summer, so if you can keep smashing that sub button, that'd be awesome. And yeah, we'll see you next week. Or we'll see you Sunday. Go!